Hello, welcome, welcome, gorgeous beings of light. This is Elmara coming to you with miracle number 91. We're on the home stretch, last 10 in the 100 Miracles in 100 Days project. Let us begin by taking a deep, long, slow breath in, filling yourself up with extraordinary love and light. Letting out everything that's outside of that with your breath out through the mouth, in through the nose, breathing divine I am presence, beautiful pure source light, out through the mouth everything that's outside of that. Filling your belly and your lungs up with air as deep as you can go, holding it for as long as it's possible. And out through the mouth and letting go of everything outside this moment. Okay, so I want you to continue breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth. Unless you begin releasing, in which case I want you to breathe in through your mouth and out through your mouth. Let go of anything that's outside of it. If you're yawning, burping, sneezing, they're all signs that energy is moving. My voice is encoded with powerful source light, but also awakening codes. And because I am connected to my divine I am presence, anything in you that is out of alignment with your divine I am presence will be coming to the surface. So if you start to feel agitated or bored or just remember, they're all signs that stuff is being released and if you just listen and keep breathing you have the greatest opportunity to upgrade your being without going through too much poop at all so just breathe just breathe so today's miracle is the one that I said I was going to do in miracle number 88 I think it was I'm going to tell you my pink tutu miracle so pretty common, well-known spiritual activation or it's not activation, spiritual known presence that you choose your parents and your circumstances in order to learn and in my opinion more importantly in order to become the most powerful being of light that you came here to be. So, miracle goes back maybe a quarter of a century, 25, 30 years. When I ran workshops, I would teach people that, but I was always known to be saying in the back of my mind, that might be so, but there's no bloody way that I chose those bunch of rednecks that I live with always was saying that in the back of my mind because there was just nothing that I had in common with them. And people talk about being the black sheep of the family. My God, I was the rainbow sheep of my family. I stood out like from miles and miles and miles away. Rainbow not because I was gay, but rainbow because I was so brightly colored in so much darkness. If I'd been a black sheep, I would have just fitted in with all the darkness. So. That's why I say I'm a rainbow sheep of the family. And there's a photo of me at about five months old, sitting um, in, a, in a baby's attempt to be sitting in a chin mudra with my little chubby legs crossed and my fingers in a chin mudra, my thumb and first finger together and my eyes closed. But I was able to sit in a full lotus yoga position and I remember doing that right up into my, you know, into my early, like, teens. And so this story is about how I was able to actually remember or find out Or be shown by source that I actually did choose 
those bunch of rednecks and they have indeed I mean I don't feel that way about them now but I did like 30 years ago when I hadn't healed all my stuff with them because I understand that I, I am one extraordinarily powerful being of light that people are healed just from listening to my voice if they're open to doing that of course if they recognize when they get cranky with me that's actually my source light bringing their poop to the surface but most people miss that not most some people do some people go on and make tons of money I spoke to a friend of mine who she's sort of a friend um, she um, she did one of my training programs back in 2006 I think it was so quite some time ago at least 15 years ago and her friend which was also my friend people usually when they do one of my big programs become my friends was the lady that passed away with her eight-year-old daughter in the last year or so in a, in a big house fire and T came to me and was chatting to me the day after she passed so but that girl the girl that was her friend who rang to tell me about Dee and was sobbing her heart out poor darling um, she just we we just catch up for coffee and chat on the phone she's got a couple of kids and life's busy for her and she recorded a new album and that song was number one on the country charts and she had the best year of her life last year just because we were friends and chatting catching up for coffee occasionally the year before that so that's what happens to people who own their stuff and just listen with an open heart and an open mind so this is a cracker. It's going to challenge all of you who still have issues with your parents or your loved ones or your ex-husbands or whatever. So I am, I've gone to my, I'm in my 30s. I would have been in my 40s, sorry, because I was in Melbourne. And I went to my chiropractor's office, but he had gone on holidays and he had a locum in his office, someone filling in for him. And this guy comes in and starts working on me. And then he says to me, did you, did you do ballet as a child or martial arts? And I said, no. I said, I did martial arts in my 20s, but I certainly didn't do ballet as a child. And, and and he kept asking me all these questions about this. And then he says to me, um, I said, why? Why do you want to know? And he says to me, it's just that I've never, ever seen anyone with such a profound connection to their body. This is the locum, so I don't know him. So the part of me that was insecure about being chubby back then, who's no longer insecure about being chubby, because if it's good enough for Buddha to have a big belly full of chi, it's good enough for me, <laughs> um, is what I know now to be true. But back then, and I, like this is part of me that really wanted to say to him, just because I'm fat doesn't mean that I don't have a profound connection to my body. But I didn't say it to him because I was being polite and nice. If you did that to me now, I'd give you a god full. But um, I just thought it to myself and then because it's network chiropractic he left the room and but when he was gone immediately now I'm clear audience and a whole pile of other clears clear sending in I feel things I know things I hear mostly is my first gift but I very seldom see things but I immediately see or become aware of um Dawn French had one of her, she's a wonderful English comedian, if you don't know who she is. And she had one of her episodes where she actually had a real ballerina um, dancing. And there's Dawn in her little chubby self with a pink, I don't know if she had a pink tutu, I think she had the same coloured tutu, um, like trying to mimic the movements that this extraordinary ballerina was doing and, and you know, creating a very, very funny scene. But in this scene, I also see myself alongside Dawn, whose shape would be similar to mine, in a pink tutu. And and I just laughed at myself and laughed it off and never said anything to the locum when it came back in to finish my treatment. 
But the next day when I'm meditating or just even going about it, I see myself in this pink tutu doing, you know, trying to be a ballerina and raw laughing to myself. But this happens for three days in a row. And on the third day I go, God, what the hell are you trying to show me? Why do you keep showing me in a pink tutu? I must have been meditating when I did that. I was immediately taken back to when I was six years old, about six. And I'm sitting in the hallway of our old farmhouse. It was the only farmhouse I lived in, so, but it was old. In the hallway, and what was usually had been the front of the house was really the back of the house for us because nobody ever went to it. People came round to the back to, because that's where the cars park. But um, and there was a veranda and when it was really hot, they'd open all of the louvers so the breeze could blow through the house. And we called it the Fremantle Doctor. It was in Western Australia from, if you're from Western Australia, you'll know that the sea breeze is called the Fremantle Doctor. And, you know, we live, 174, about about 200 miles from Perth and we would always be hanging out for this sea breeze to come all the way from Perth which would take a few hours and I was sitting cross-legged in a chin mudra in the hallway just breathing and that's why I still have to this day a great love for the wind and if, if I'm ever lonely I just go and stand outside and ask the wind to come hug me I absolutely love the wind. And I have people go, I hate the wind, and I just don't understand it because I, you know, I can call it up and just feel it just so, ever so gently wrap itself around me and caress me and even kiss the side of my face. And so I'm sitting there in this chin mudra and the way I'm sitting, like the kitchen door, the door to the kitchen is at one end of the hallway, bedrooms were at the other end, but I was sitting in front of the doorway and our kitchen table was right on that doorway and mum was sitting at the end of that um, kitchen table with her back to me and then another lady who was visiting who was a Seventh-day Adventist was she a Jehovah's Witness one of those anyway and she was sitting on the corner but she could see me clearly but mum couldn't see me at all and mum and her are chatting and next thing this woman who was visiting from Perth, they were friends of dad's, dad had you know shared a house with them when he was a boy before he got married or when he was working. He boarded there and they became good friends and she says to mum, what's Valma doing? That was my name before I changed it legally when I turned 50 to my spirit name. You're going to find out why in a moment why I changed my name. Mum doesn't even turn around. She just yells out, Valma! That two syllable stuff. Stop it! And um, the woman just said, No, no, no. She's just sitting there quietly. So Mum turns her head around then to look at me. And because she had said, What's Valma doing? Mum, mum just yelled out, Valma, stop it. Mum, mum just turns around and goes, Oh, I don't know what she's doing. She's been doing that since she could sit up at five months old. And the woman says, well, she's doing yoga. Mum said, oh, I don't know. She's just been sitting like that since she was five months old, since she could sit up at five months old. Just breathe for me, please. <laughs> I'm just remembering that feeling even, you know, of the memory when it came back to me. And I remember going, oh, my God. Oh, my God. My family didn't even know what yoga was when this woman said that and of course that whatever that religion was they were against you doing yoga because of course it helps you become empowered with as to who you are and I was like oh my god my parents didn't even know what yoga was and if I came in being able to sit up in a yoga position at five months old I must have chosen my parents and my circumstances in order to learn I must have and so for those of you who doubt that you chose your parents and your circumstances in order to learn, you do. And now, like 20 years on, well, it didn't take long after that, once I stopped trying, saying, you know, P 
people might choose their parents in the circumstances, but I didn't choose those rednecks to be my family. Once I stopped doing that and started asking, why did I choose those bunch of rednecks to be my family? What was the higher purpose of that? What am I missing here? Everything changed. I no longer kept attracting people who were trying to I was no longer kept attracting people who were trying to <laughs> show me why I chose those bunch of rednecks to be my parents. And sometimes we, there is great gifts and all that stuff that happened when we were kids. One of the big things I learned about that was that had I come in as a, you know, as a fully fledged being or whatever, who knew all of her gifts. How would I have ever related to the everyday people that do struggle, that don't know what to do with that? One of my greatest gifts is the fact that people can just have a conversation with me and be healed by that because I have transmuted the darkness in my light back to source energy, not necessarily back to light, but back to pure source energy, to balance source light. So therefore, when I'm in the presence of darkness or in the presence of someone who is not in alignment with their um, God self, their divine self, then I can just hold the vision of their God self and have them transmute or raise up into it because your 3D self, your shitty self, all the poopy self, that's a man-made version of you. Who you truly are is an infinite, eternal, rich, abundant, gorgeous, gorgeous, sexy, radiant, powerful, beyond measure, being of light. That is also the reason why when you come into my presence and when you come to work with me, miracles happen, that your, your lot changes. That's the reason Mel has been topping the charts for all of this last 2022. That's the reason because I activated her greatness within her and she wrote some songs and they just became, became hits. That's the reason why Jackie manifested $36,000 a year for the rest of her life within 20 days of listening to me consistently every day for 20 days. That's why another client, when she, you know, committed to doing a... $5,995 training program with me, she manifested $93,000 within four hours, I think it was, might have been five, I think it was 5 p.m. and it came in at 9 p.m. But the great thing about that miracle, as I've mentioned before, is that miracle was already in the making because she decided she wanted to do it and then support followed through. So just remember, no desire is ever felt without the substance already being given. So if you want to do my training, just come and have a discovery call and see what opens up for you. See what opens up for you. You might not have the $2,222, but there might be a way that we can help you get that money. So just come and have a discovery session if you truly want to do it. If you want to become a powerful fifth dimension activator and healer and you know it's the next step on your journey, then please, Contact me through the contact form on my website, www.elmaraseraphim.com. All of the details are below. So, we do choose our parents and our circumstances in order to learn. If you've still got poop going on in your life and you're not just manifesting freely the things that you want for yourself, I can almost guarantee you have some stuff that's not, that's, that's in 3D in your being that just needs to be raised up into the fifth dimension. That's why my fifth dimensional work is so powerful. That's why there's four decades of testimonials on my website because people who've just been playing in the poo, we call it, where you're just digging up stuff and burying it and dissecting it and trisecting it and bisecting it. And then, you know, or they do a workshop and they feel fabulous and a month later they're exactly back to where they were. No. Raise your frequency up into the divine I am presence you've always been. And that light is so powerful, it dissolves all that poop anyway. 
And we will teach you how to do that. And the magnificent thing about that is when you get into that space within yourself, everyone else around you is uplifted and upgraded as well. So if you're ready to step into that kind of healing, magical healing, like really, really magical healing that transmutes all of that old stuff back to source light, back to pure oneness, then please reach out. We'll be starting in April um, at this point. We've, we've got it set up for April. So we would truly, truly love to have you join us if you feel like this is the right next step on your journey. And even if you just do this next first step of my fifth dimension activation, it will help bring you into alignment and change your life. So breathe in, breathe out, take your awareness and point your hands to the sun and tie your energy as you breathe out around the sun. Breathe in, bring all that source light from the sun down into your body, breathe it out into your body, but take the last 5% of that energy down into earth and tie it around the core of Mother Earth. Bring 100% earth energy back up. Breathe it out into your body. Breathe out. Take the last 5% up to the sun. Breathe in, source light from the sun down. Breathe it out into your 100 trillion cells and your 100 trillion telomeres. Take the last 5% down into earth. Breathe in. Breathe out. Last 5% to the sun. Breathe in. 100% down, breathe it all out into your being. Take the last 5% down into the earth. Breathe in and bring that energy back up from earth. And just continue to do that now. Well, I just give you a very quick 20 second blast of fifth dimensional energy. It will help line up all of your meridian lines, clear your chakras, bring you into alignment with the earth and sun where all of your money and goodness comes from anyway. Alrighty. Love, love, love. My deepest love and richest blessings to you all. And bye for now.